Hi everyone, how are you students? We're looking at problem number eight from paper two from the recent mock exam. That's the uh, the problem on which you were asked not to do part D and E because we didn't cover the normal distributions. Part E is um, application of binomial distribution. So we'll have, we, we did cover that before the mock exam, but because in that part E you would have a need to, you needed to use uh, numbers from part D, we uh, did not include this in uh, the mock exam or in the final grade. Some of you looked at it and some of you even uh, tried to do it and I think one or two of you actually got the values correct. Um, so if you already know how to do this, you, you don't need to watch this video. Uh, I'm going to go jump directly to part D and E. Well, to do that, uh, I'm going to have to do part C first because in part D we'll need numbers from C. Uh, and then at the end, I'm going to um, uh, do the, the part A through B for those of you that didn't get that right uh, on the mock exam or you, well you haven't seen your mock exams yet but you might remember whether you were or not able to do part A and B. Um, so for, first let's uh, look at the the second part of the uh, of the questions C, D and E. We have 80 rats and the cumulative frequency of the distribution of mass of these rats is given by this graph. Um, so we have over here we have rats um, that are lighter and here we have, I shouldn't say lighter, I should say less massive and more massive because we are given the values in grams. Um, and we have a total of, of 80 rats and of course we have rats that have masses in between uh, on the two extremes. Um, so in part C, right here, we're asked to use values from the table to estimate the mean and the standard deviation uh, of the weights. Uh, and really it should say deviation, standard deviation of the masses, not of the rates, come on IV. So um, in this table, now our 80 rats are grouped into four ranges from 0 to 30 grams, from, the, from 30 to 60 grams, from 60 to 90, and from 90 to 120. And we are given the frequencies for two of these ranges. Uh, in part B, we will have found uh, that P is 10 and that uh, Q here was 20, and we'll show how to do that later on. Um, if you add all of the frequencies, we should uh, now cover all of our 80 rats. And I believe we do. 10 plus 45 plus 20 plus 5 is 80. Um, so to find the mean and the standard deviation, um, we're not going to do this by hand because this is paper 2. So we'll use uh, a calculator. Uh, to do that first, we're going to need to find, um, basically we're going to create two lists. In one list, we're going to have the, the masses for the rats and in the second, the frequencies. Uh, but we don't know the mass of each uh, rat. Um, we are told that there are 10 rats that are between 0 and 30 grams. So some uh, are you know closer to 0, some are closer to 30. So that's why we are basically making an assumption in here uh, that on average, each of those 10 rats is 15 grams. Uh, each of these 45 gram rats um, or there are 45 rats uh, that have a mean mass of 45. 30 plus 60 is 90, 90 divided by 2 is 45. These are the grams. And then we have 20 rats um, that are um, 75 grams on average and 5 grams that are 105 grams on average. Again, where did a 105 come from? 90 plus 120. 110, sorry, 210, 210 divided by 2 is 105. So on our calculator, um, we'll go to stats, uh, edit, and we have our two lists over here. Um, you can see here I have the mean masses and here are the frequencies uh, in list two. So then we just have to go to um, I believe it's that, and then calculate one variable statistics. List one are our values, our masses, list two is frequencies, and we calculate this one variable statistic. We get 
mean is the first value there up there 52.5 grams and if you scroll down to come on can I go down <laughs> it doesn't let me to scroll down but the Sigma X is the standard deviation the 22.5 grams so let's write those two values here 52.5 and 22.5 so we have over here our sorry uh, I don't know what color I should use for it I'll continue to use the well I'm not gonna say the what color it is because girls are gonna laugh that I'm saying the wrong color so the mean here was 52.5 grams and our standard deviation was 22.5 grams now in part D Assume that the weights of these rats are normally distributed with the mean and standard deviation that we just calculated. Part D, find the percentage of rats that weighed 70 grams or less. As with each uh, problem on normal distribution, I urge you to always draw a picture. So let's draw our standard bell curve. Uh, the area underneath this um, probability density uh, curve is one we know the, the mean value here is um, 52.5 grams and our standard deviation is 22.5 we are asked to find the percentage of rats that are 70 grams or lighter so maybe 70 is over here so what we are asked um, is to find this area to the left of the 70 and the area underneath the curve so it's going to be a number that's less than one and this number also um, it represents the probability that if i choose randomly one rat out of our uh, uh, population in here of 80 um, we want the probability that our random variable here i'm going to call it m for mass uh, is less than 70. Uh, let me also write in here that what we have is a uh, random variable x which is distributed normally with a mean of 52.5 and a variance in the standard notation we would write our variance in here which is 22.5 squared now remember that in the standard notation for normal distribution you are writing variance not uh, standard deviation sorry uh, the, in the uh, standard way we we write um, uh, normal distribution we don't use standard deviation we use the variance there that's why i squared the standard deviation um, and um, to do this we would use a calculator so we would um, write uh, what we are looking for is normal CDF not PDF but CDF because we're looking for uh, a range of values a range all the way from negative infinity basically to 70 even though the negative infinity mass would not make any sense uh, in order to get the the precise values um, so in order to cover the whole um, left tail of our bell curve we're gonna we have to use uh, basically a ridiculously small number uh, which does not really make sense in terms of the masses of the rats because uh, a rat cannot have a negative mass uh, but for the mathematics uh, to get the same values as IB does um, we would need to do that so uh, we're going to use the function on the calculator normal CDF um, let's go to our calculator uh, let's clear this uh, let's exit and under distributions over here we have normal CDF and it's going to help you um, it's going to prompt you what do you want for the lower end of, your, of the range you're covering and you can see I put a basically negative infinity in there um, again um, really it would make sense to, to put a zero in there um, but we would not get the correct uh, precise answer that we want uh, 
we want to cover the masses that are up to 70 grams so I'm not including 70 that's why I have 69.99999 uh, here's our mean and our standard deviation let's calculate it so press enter press enter and there is our value 0 0.781649 0 0.781649 um, 0 0.781649 um, I'm not using just three significant digits in here um, because um, IB when they did those calculations, the mark scheme, uh, you aren't gonna match the mark scheme if you just, uh, you know, round here to three decimals. Um, so we can write in here that this probability represents roughly 78.2%. So 78.2% of the rats are lighter than 70. Hmm. Mr. Plasho, come on, not lighter, less massive than uh, 70 grams. Um, um, and uh, we should write in here also the methods. So this came from GDC using normal CDF so that the grader uh, can give us method points. We should also write in here that this came from um, our graphic calculator using one variable statistics again method points um, great so let me erase this uh, basically we've completed part D uh, now let's complete part E um, in part E what we are told to do is that out of these 70 rats we are to pick five rats at random and uh, where to find the probability that at most and this is crucial right here not to overlook that it's as at most three rats at most three rats so note that three rats have a mass of um, less than 70 grams but that at most three rats at most three rats covers that um, the case is that none of those five rats uh, would have a mass of 70. So what's the probability that none of them has mass uh, less than 70? What's the probability that one of them has mass less than 70? What's the probability that two of them has ma have masses less than 70? And what's the probability that three of them have a mass that's less than 70 grams? We need to cover all of these probabilities in our answer um, to part C. And to do that very, very quickly, what we would do is that we would use this is a binomial distribution because there are only two um, different outcomes less than 70 or equal and more than 70 um, the events are independent of each other so um, the probability uh, choosing let's say the first rat is not going to affect the probability uh, of success uh, when I'm choosing the second rat so uh, before you use probability distribution, make sure that you've covered all of the, uh, the assumptions or all of the conditions that have to be met to be able to use uh, binomial distribution. They say normal distribution uh, before uh, we're using binomial distribution. And right? so the conditions for binomial distribution have to be met. Okay, so let's do this. Um, binom CDF, not PDF, binom CDF. Uh, we have five trials. The probability of success, I'm gonna use again the, the long value of 0.781649 uh, and um, at most three. And then we just plug it into the calculator. So under distributions, we would choose binomial CDF we have five trials with um, a probability of 0 0.781649 and at most three rats 
So what's the probability that most three rats have a have a mass that's less than 70 grams? The less than 70 is uh, represented here by the probability uh, that a randomly chosen uh, rat uh, has a mass of less than 70. That probability is 0.781649. Boom! There we have it. 0.30067. 0 0.30067. So 0 0.30067, which is rounded to through three decimals, uh, three uh, the significant digits, 0 0.301, and that's our answer. Okay, so um, uh, if you just wanted to get this out of this video, now you know how to do part uh, D and E. You can stop watching the video. Uh, for the rest of you, uh, I want to go um, and uh, look closer first at the binomial distribution. Uh, if this was on paper one and you were given some of these values in here uh, so you didn't have to calculate them, like uh, maybe part part D, but you were just given these values and you're asked to do this by hand, how would you do it by hand? That's the first thing we're going to look at. Excuse me. So. How do we calculate uh, the binomial distribution? Uh, so if I wanted to find out, if the question was the same, what is the probability that at most three rats uh, chosen out of five rats that we choose out of those 70, uh, what is the probability that at most three have that mass less than 70? Um, again, uh, you have to realize that, that you are covering four cases in here. So you're covering the, the case that the probability uh, of which the probability where the our mass is equal to sorry uh, not mass but the number of the rats um, I'm not going to use random variable m in here but uh, let me use random variable x right so that uh, exactly three rats have a mass that's less than seventy then the probability that um, uh, exactly two rats out of those five have mass less than 70, exactly one, and then none. Right? And the probability of at most three uh, would be when you add all these probabilities together. So you would then add these probabilities together. And how would you find each of these probabilities? Well, um, let's look at the, the top one. Um, so basically we have five rats. Um, maybe the first one fits our description, the second one does not, the third one does, the fourth one does not, and the fifth one does. You would multiply those probabilities, the 0 0.7H2, uh, I'm going to round it in here, right? You would multiply it by uh, 0. Point, um, the probability of not success would be 0 0.218. Right, one minus 0 0.782. And let's say the third one again fit our description. The fourth one uh, did not. And we need one more that fits the description, 0 0.782. So basically you have 0 0.782 to the uh, third power multiplied by 0 0.218 to the uh, second power. But uh, this could have happened in different order. Uh, so you have to now include all of the different combinations, uh, all of the different um, cases uh, of the o different orders in which those uh, three rats would fit our description. And so that's given by um, n choose k. Uh, so we have uh, out of five, we want three rats that, that match our description. Um, I'm going to erase these over here. Uh, before I erase it. Uh, so if, if these uh, brackets or uh, these parentheses were in different order, right? because in multiplication order doesn't matter, in each case we would have 0 0.782 cubed and 0 0.21, uh, 0 0.218 squared. So that's why I'm going to just write it this way now. This would be cubed and this would be squared in each case. 
Um, if you didn't have a calculator, how would you find n choose k? You would have to do n factorial divided by n minus k factorial times k factorial. In our case, this would be 5 factorial. Again, this is um, in your uh, pro formula booklet, um, how to find n choose k uh, in terms of factorials. So 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 3 is 2 factorial times 3 factorial. Let's simplify that quickly. Uh, we have 5 times 4 times 3 factorial on the top. On the bottom we have 2 times 1 times 3 factorial. These factorials cancel and we have 20 divided by 2 which is 10. So we actually can find out what is uh, the n choose k using that formula. I'll erase this, I don't need it here on the paper. Um, but that's how I would do that to find out. Uh, so we would have 10 times 0.782 cubed times 0.218 squared. You would multiply that uh, and uh, yeah, how would you multiply it without calculator? Well, maybe it would just ask you for the formula. Now, I just wanted to show you how to do this without the binom. Um, CDF because maybe the binom CDF does not you don't know what is happening right the binom CDF is just calculating each of these uh, four in here and adding them together um, this one would be 5 choose 2 and then the 0.782 would be squared and the 0.218 would be cubed and this would be 5 choose 1 0.782 to the first power and 0.218 to the fourth power. This one will be 5 choose 0 to 1 to the 0 power and 0.218 to the fifth power. Now, so these are the probabilities to get the exact values of choosing exactly 3, exactly 2, exactly 1, exactly none. Uh, rat that fits our description out of those five rats that we randomly chose out of our uh, population of 80 rats. Um, so that's what the binom CDF does. Um, it gets us the sum of these four values. Binom PDFs would be for each of these values in here. So if you wanted to know the probability that exactly three rats fit our description, you would use binom PDF with um, five choose three. Good, so we've done that. Now let's go really quickly and let's, let's look at part A and part B uh, for which we would use the graph and uh, we should write uh, with your answers for part A and B that you uh, use the graph uh, and on the graph you should label the values so that the grader can see what you did. So very quickly let's go through this. I'll go back to my purple. Um, Can I change this a little bit? Um, I just want you to see the picture good. Okay, well, good. So, part A, write down the median weight. We have 80 rats, uh, 50th percentile median. Um, so out of 80 rats, this would be 40 rats, 50th percentile. So we would go, our 50th percentile is this value down here, which is 50 grams, that would be the um, median weight. So I would write in here then my median median equals 50 grams. It's the median mass, not the median weight. Median weight would be given in newtons or pounds. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's A and I would write that this came from the graph and maybe I would write in here 50th percentile for the grader to see that uh, I know what I'm doing. Uh, find the percentage of rats that weigh 70 grams or less. So for 70 grams, let me choose a different color. Uh, here is 70 grams. So how many rats are below this mass? On the graph, we can see that over here. So there are 65 rats uh, that have a mass of below 70 grams. Um, 
Now, this will be interesting to compare it with the values uh, in part D, right? Where we assume the normal distribution. Here we are we're working with this graph in here. And again, we're looking for how many, what is the percentage of rats that have a mass less than 70. So again, you could say that we're looking, we're calculating here the probability. If I randomly pick a rat in here, uh, that is mass is less than 70. And so we have uh, 65 of them out of 80. And what does calculator give me? 65 divided by 80. That's 0 0.8125 or about 81.25%. Um, again, this is not assuming normal distribution. This is just using the values from the graph and it slightly differs from our probability that we found here, uh, which was, we found it in here. Come on. OMG. This was 70 that I'm putting my hand on that stupid iPad or I guess it's my stupid hand on the smart iPad I don't want to add a caption to this picture okay this was the value we found in part uh, D and uh, now we found out from the graph that that actually would be this value in here if we are not assuming normal distribution with the values we found uh, later on in part C from the table. So uh, there it is, part A and B. Okay, so now let's just quickly uh, go. No, I would write here that this came from the graph. There you go, grader. Give me method points. Uh, and I shifted the picture, so this is now off over here. Um, let's find this right here. Let's find uh, the values of P and Q from our graph. So P is the number of rats that's in the range of from zero to 30 grams. So from zero to 30 grams, that's over here. And we wanna see how many rats are in this range. So on our graph, I would go on over here. This represents 30 grams. So these 10, right? That's why P is 10. Those 10 rats have a mass less than 70. And then over here, I'll change color. Now to look for Q, we are looking for rats that are in the range of 60 grams, which is over here. There are Okay, I lost sound. I'm not sure if you're going to. Hello? Okay, I lost sound there. I must have jerked on my cable in here and it pulled out the, the jack from the, the headphones. Uh, so 55 rats uh, that are below 60 grams and there are, there's 90 grams. So oh, 75 rats that are below 90 grams. So in that range, in this range over here, we have 20 such rats. That's why Q in here was 20. So we would have uh, said in here that P was 10 and Q was 20. And I would again say that this came from the graph. There you go, method points are in Chiching. Um, um, in, in the later videos, I'm going to look at um, um, some of the problems that you, that you missed, some of the points that many people missed in the uh, mock exam. Uh, some of these points, I was so sad when I saw that you were missing them because these problems are so easy. Um, so I'll record a video that shows how to solve them. Uh, hopefully it will help you and you will understand what to do if you have a problem like that on the world exam. Um, good talking to you.